Welcome to Here We Are Now, a series that looks at what life experiences went into the creation of your favorite art and why we love it. Here's your host, Matt Collette, to uncover the connection between music, movies, and mental health. You know, when Kurt died, I remember the next day and thinking, um, I, I still get to live. So I'm going to live every day like it's my last one. Even if it's the worst day, I'm going to try to appreciate it. And um, I still feel that way. I never want to die. I honestly feel like if I get to do this and I've got these beautiful kids, as long as I can do this and do this, um, I'm all good. David Eric Grohl was born on January 14th, 1969 to teach her mom, Virginia, and journalist dad, James. After his parents divorced, he spent most of his time with his mom, who was his biggest fan. We all know the story, from teenage drumming phenomenon in the D.C. area to his entry into Nirvana in time for their second album in success, leading up to the tragic death of frontman Kurt Cobain. I went through a really dark period where I couldn't really even listen to the radio because it broke my heart just to hear music. I wasn't doing anything, you know. I uh, Nirvana was was over, and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do musically with the rest of my life. But I had always recorded songs by myself. Now this is where Paul McCartney comes in. Yeah, it was kind of difficult to know what to do, you know, after the Beatles. How do you follow that? And um, so I'd been doing a lot of stuff just at home, writing and things. It was very depressing, you know, because I took to the bevies. I took to a wee drum. And, uh, you know, it was great at first. And then after a while, it was... <laughs> getting up in the morning. No, I was, I was a bit far gone, you know. And uh, suddenly I wasn't having a good time. It wasn't working. I mean, music is the only thing that I really, 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 really love to do. And so, you know, for a few months I stopped and then I just started feeling like, oh, I've got to keep on, I have to do more, I have to do more, I have to do more. So that was it. It was just really something to do to get over the shock of not being in the Beatles anymore. Because, yeah. you know, that's all I'd ever known musically. Um, I'd either been in the Quarrymen or the Silver Beatles, or the Beatles. And then suddenly I was in nothing. Because, you know, there's a danger that you just go, I can't do it. Because, you know, like I say, you say follow that with the Beatles, but it really isn't an easy act to follow, you know. At some point, I was finally motivated. Oh, I'm gonna get myself out of this funk I've been in for the last eight months or whatever it was, you know. I decided that I was gonna take my favorite songs that I'd written over the last four or five years that no one had heard. So I booked a week at the studio, and at the end of the week, I had a cassette, and it sounded good. It was good, it was good making that record, um, just as a liberation. Paul McCartney's first solo album, 1970's self-titled McCartney, is very similar to the first Foo Fighters record in that both he and Dave put these songs down more as a way to deal with their depression in a purposeful, positive way. Just as Paul realized that he couldn't play every instrument on stage, which led to the formation of Wings, Dave turned his imaginary band into a real one, one that would become one of the biggest bands ever over the next 27 years. As life changed for Dave, from the joy of starting a family to the death of parents, the friendship that he formed with Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins was a constant source of support. You know, depression is a disease, and, um, and everybody kind of goes through it their own way. Um, I can't speak for anybody else's condition, but... Um, you know, the hardest part is when you lose a friend, you know? And I just always immediately think of their families and um, their bandmates. And I think that mental health and depression is something that people should really take seriously. And there's a stigma attached to it. 
that's unfortunate because just as you take care of yourselves in every other way, I think it's important that people really try to take care of themselves in that way too. Um, <coughs> and it ain't easy, you know, life's hard. But, um, yeah. you know, like you said, people, you know, you got it so together. I mean, that just goes to show you, you know, it doesn't matter what's in your, you know, how much, what's in your bank account or how many hits are on your YouTube page or all that kind of crap. It all goes out the window if you're, like Dave said, if you're not feeling, not feeling right. On March 25th, 2022, Taylor passed away suddenly before a Foo Fighters concert in Columbia. How would Dave deal with this tragedy? Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we've gathered here to celebrate the life, the music, and the love of our dear friend, our bandmate, our brother, Taylor Hawkins. It's times like these learn to live again. It's times like these to give and get. The two benefit concerts held in Taylor's honor were both big name, successful, and emotionally cathartic events. But the question remained, how would Dave process these traumas? Not just his friend Taylor's, but his parents, COVID, our trauma. Paul McCartney lost his mother, Mary, to cancer when he was only 14. This loss connected him to John Lennon, who had also lost his mother tragically in a car accident around the same time. You like to think you're tough, you can take these things and you can, you know, give me your best shot. But of course, when you lose someone, it's not really possible. You can put it inside yourself and hide it if you want, but I don't think that's a good thing. So for me, what I found was to talk to people a lot, not worry about crying like a baby sometimes if that's what you have to do you're not worried about who was looking at you um, and just really let it all out when john died it was so difficult it was difficult for everyone in the world because he was such a loved character and such a crazy guy you know that he was so special and so it had hit me so much so that i couldn't really talk about it and i remember getting home from the studio on the day that we'd heard the news he died and turning the TV on and seeing people say, well, John Lennon was this and what he was was this. And I remember meeting him then da, 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 and it was like, I don't know, I can't be one of those people. I can't just go on TV and say what John meant to me. It was just too deep. It's just too much. I couldn't put it into words. So um, a while later, once the emotions had sort of settled a little bit, I was in a building that would become my recording studio, and there were just a couple of little empty rooms upstairs. So I found a room and just sat on the wooden floor in a corner with my guitar and just started to play the opening chords to Here Today. Then, in 1998, a cruel twist of fate would bring cancer back to Paul's life, claiming his wife of almost 30 years and the mother of his children, Linda McCartney. Perhaps knowing the importance of staying creative and purposeful in the face of tragedy, Dave made his first appearance on stage after Taylor's death with Paul McCartney at Glastonbury. Hey. Love you, Dave. Thanks, man. We all love you. Thank you, Paul. And now, new music. Music about loss, purpose, life, love, grief, and moving forward. Let's talk about rescue. <laughs> 